Hello. Today we're going to create a quick start trip with Cache Tourneau. The goal today is to show you how to create a trip in such a simple way that anyone ought to be able to do it on the first try. We're going to take the trip that was created for the GeoGearhead show number 375 using a more complex process and show you how it could be done if all you had was a starting point, an ending point, and a list of caches you wanted to find. Normally the starting point and the ending point would be your own home probably. In this reprisal of the show, the starting point was in New York City and the ending point was in Washington DC. Someone gave us a list of GC codes with the starting point, some rather mixed up GC codes reflecting things to be found along the way, and the ending point in Washington, D.C. And we want to create an optimized route that will give us good driving times and help us find these caches. This presumes you've already created an account with cachetour.no. There's nothing terribly complex about that any more than creating an account on any other internet websites. Given that we have an account and we're signed in, you are on the dashboard page here, and we'll go over on the right hand side of the dashboard page and create a new trip. Click that. And we have to fill in some information about our trip, like the name of it. So it's New York to DC, quick start. It's not a hiking trip, so we'll change that to be a car trip. Trip destination is Washington, D.C. Um, we'll call it an all-day trip since we don't really much care about refining the time precisely yet. Uh, let's move it just sometime out in the future for now. I don't know a date, but let's put it way on out here, say, towards the end of August. Uh, time zone start, that'll get corrected automatically for us. we we'll end it. it Pushed us forward to end on the next day. That all seems fine. And doing the minimum things, we simply save our trip. There you go. You've now created a trip, which has no waypoints in it. So we need to get some. As I said, someone gave me a list of waypoints beginning with the start point in New York and the ending point in Washington, D.C. and a number of caches in between. I've copied those to my clipboard. And so what I'm going to do next is go to the edit menu here at the top. These are the main menus you will have to work with at a trip level. There's higher level menus at the site level uh, just above that. But we'll go to edit. We will edit trip info and waypoints since we have some waypoints. And we have a list of GC codes. That's exactly what we have. So we'll click that. We will paste the codes I said I had on my clipboard. We will add them to our trip and we'll save the trip. Okay, so here's here's my trip. Um, maybe it's reasonable. Let's take a look at the map. Uh, we don't have anything showing on the map yet except that things seem pretty weird. I got Stop one, stop two, stop three, they're all mixed up because the whoever gave it to me didn't exactly put them in the right order. So the next thing I need to do is get them into a optimized order. So I will go to edit. I will sort and prioritize my waypoints. Here's all of my waypoints. I will simply do toggle marked, which selects all of them. And when we ask it to optimize, it will not optimize the first and the last, because that's the start and the end, but it will rearrange the ones in the middle to reflect an optimal route to go from the start to the end. The automatic sorting tool says calculate and sort by optimal route. So we'll click that. It didn't take very long. There we go. That looks like a, a nice reasonable route. We have a route line. Uh, okay, let's be sure we remember to save it 
since we do like what we've got. Okay, we've got the caches in an optimum order to drive. The last thing we need to do is figure out how long it's going to take us to drive that. So we will order a new route calculation. This takes information reflecting the distance and estimated driving time from one cache to the next cache and builds a route reflecting those times. While it's doing that, you'll notice there are icons here. This one will tell you that the cache is a bit off the route distance-wise. Tells you somebody had didn't find it within the last few times. Um, so you can consult these icons for some information. The notification here at the top tells you when the route calculation is completed. Uh, it's just fixed the time zones for me so far, so I'll have to wait a little bit longer. You can, for example, any one of these, uh, while we're killing some, ah, number three, it has finished our right calculation. So we simply refresh the page, reflect the data that we got. We can go directly to the map in the page by clicking map. There's our route, and it looks about like what we had before, but what's different about it now is that we have some times associated with this. We know how long it's going to take to do these things. So if I go to the starting point, and click on this little hidden quick edit icon, which ha happens when you scroll over these things. Click there and put, let's say I want to start my trip at 8.30 in the morning. Don't want to get up too early. Click that. Refresh my page. Now I have estimated times of arrival at each of the, each of the caches along the route and we can see we're going to get into DC and finish about 4.30 in the afternoon. What a nice thing to know where we're going to be, when we're going to be. The last thing you might want to do before you execute the trip is go to download and create a trip package. We want, in this case, just the waypoints in a GPX file. If you like spreadsheets, you can get a CSV file as well. If you have other equipment, uh, like Garmin equipment that will let provide handle driving routes, you can turn that part of the packages on, but we'll just do a GPX. We'll order the trip package. And after a little bit, it will generate our trip package and we'll see the notification here go up indicating that the trip package is ready for download. Then we would simply click on the link, which is not there yet, uh, to create, start the download, and we can take the downloaded GPX and put it in our GPSR or our phone or send it to somebody. Depending on what you want to do with it, it's now available to you. There is an, a separate Trip Assistant app, which we'll look at a little later, that lets you take this trip and execute the trip and recomputes your ETAs as you go along in the trip. So if you find something quicker than expected, you'll be told you're going to you're ahead of schedule. If you're falling behind, you'll be told you're falling behind. Uh, you can see quite a bit of information and it's all entirely offline. So it's a very handy thing to use when actually running the trip. You plan it on the website and you execute it or run it with the offline Trip Assistant app that you can load from the App Store or the Play Store and put it on your mobile device. That's about all there is to this. Uh, we planned a trip. It didn't take us very long and we didn't do anything complicated. Uh, anybody ought to be able to do this given a list of geocaches. And they're ready to go. There's our download package. It's arrived. So if I refresh this I'll see I could I could download my my trip package at this point. That's all for today. We'll have some other quick starts uh, looking at different workflows. This particular workflow assumed a list of GC codes. Another kind of workflow that people do evol revolves around having a bookmark list that they want to um, take a trip on. And so we'll do that in a different quick start video. Thanks.